Our adventures in Italy had so far seen us wander at Pisa's Leaning Tower, soak up the culture of Florence and discover the impossibility of exploring Rome in just a few hours. And day six of this cruise saw us dock in Naples, and this gave us the opportunity to get on an excursion to the archaeological ruins of Pompeii. Pre-cruise excursions to Pompeii had sold out quickly, but we'd managed to book onto a trip entitled Pompeii and Naples Through the Lens. The description seemed to promise tours of both Pompeii and Naples with a guide helping you capture the best photos. And whilst it didn't quite work out as described, we did get an enjoyable trip to both places. It was an early bus that whisked us out of Naples on the 30 minute journey to Pompeii. The coach was full and this was a large group for a walking tour. Once at Pompeii we were handed tickets and radios with earpieces. We had arrived before the site officially opened at 9 o'clock but there were already significant queues to get into the site. Well, here we are, we're at Pompeii, really excited for this. We're doing a PNR excursion entitled Pompeii and Naples through the lens. So we're not too sure what it involves, although it does seem to be sort of a guided and narrated tour. We've got earpieces in. Uh, we go for about an hour and a half here at Pompeii, and then they're going to drag us into Naples, probably sell us a whole load of stuff. But hopefully, we'll get to go around some of the main sites in Naples. I think Maybe. they changed the lane, though. I think because um, they're going around with a, like a selfie thing, so they're saying it's a selfie tour. So. Selfie tour we'll through the lens. Okay. <laughs> we don't know, but we're here at Pompeii, it's something we want to do, so um, we're looking forward to this. Definitely. We then went on a narrated walking tour of parts of the site, including the gladiatorial training area, the theatres, houses and bakeries, and the baths, as well as the forum area. Sadly, within the 90 minutes allowed for this tour, we were not able to take in the amphitheatre and several other of the impressive locations, nor visit the museum either. Exploring Pompeii's ruins was brilliant, and we really wanted to stay here longer. It's simply mesmerising to wander these intact Roman streets and think about the tragedy that happened here nearly 2,000 years ago. This tour was running on a tightly timed schedule. But despite not allowing enough time to visit either the amphitheatre or museum, the tour did provide time for us all to sit through a sales pitch for locally made cameo jewellery. Mm. Just enough time to buy fridge magnets and some locally made lemon drinks. How much? Cy nearly fainted on the floor and it wasn't due to the heat. How much were those drinks, Neddy? 16 euros. 16 euros? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness me. Oh well, <laughs> let's enjoy it. Well, once I had picked up my teeth off the floor, we headed back to the bus and returned to Naples. Parked up outside the cruise terminal, our guide then led us into the city centre and to the beautiful Galleria in the heart of the city shopping area. We were told that we had one hour to do shopping and eat before returning for a narrated walking tour of the city centre. The large group scattered and we decided we needed to find food. So Si, what have you ordered? Well, I'm in Naples, so it's got to be pizza. Now you've ordered something quite strange. What have you ordered? Um, it's, I think, called um, Pete's Frick. Looks interesting. Anyway, we'll have a look at that when it comes up. Like we've had a busy morning. We've had a whistle stop tour around Pompeii. It was not there long enough, to be really honest, but enjoyed it all the same. Always wanted to go there. Looks like we're going to get like one hour's walking tour here in Naples. Um, this will be interesting. We've got a guy who's chatting in our ears taking us around, showing us the main sites in the sort of city centre, so enjoying that, we're just waiting for our food now. This was a busy street food outlet in the heart of Naples and we couldn't wait to taste the food that we'd ordered. It took 20 minutes for our food to be prepared and we found a step in a nearby street to scoff our feast, they're glamorous eh? So we've just ordered some pizza and uh, from a street food seller in uh, Naples here. Anyway, foodie review time now, what do you think? I've got this thing called a pizza fritter. Um, and there it is. It's the dough is really tasty. It's like a sort of fried dough. Um, inside it's got like sort of cheese, tomato, um, and bits of little ham pieces. Yeah, very different. It could do with a, probably a bit more flavour. It's fine. fairly fairly bland. Okay. Um, it's quite bland. The, the filling, I would say. Wow. Yeah. Harsh from you. That. <laughs> Out of five. Um, I'd say three out of five. Okay, three out of five. Yeah. I had the Mariana pizza, uh, or Mariara pizza, which is um, it's lots of tomato, some basil, some oregano, and some garlic in there. They really went overboard with the tomato, like just dripping out everywhere. Mm -hmm. But it was quite tasty, but it was a bit like a margarita without the cheese, really. 
Um, I'm going to give it also a 3 out of 5. Right. We returned to the gallery and met up with the group. We then embarked on a one hour walking tour with our guide struggling to make herself heard as many of the group's radios were failing. Sites taken in on the tour included the Cassiopeia Fountain, the Royal Palace of Naples, unfortunately we couldn't go inside, the Piazza del Pubblico, the Venus in Rags modern sculpture, and Castle Nouveau, and again we couldn't go inside unfortunately. So we didn't explore inside anywhere but the shops. Then we returned to the port and made our way on board the ship. This was the only port where we needed to show our passport, or a copy of our passport, to board the ship. One final selfie with Vesuvius in the background, then back on board Azura for some much needed chilling time on our balcony. This night was the second celebration night of the cruise and was poorly supported by the passengers with many opting for a more casual dress code. Our evening took in a meal before hitting the Brodie's pub. We wanted to catch the sunsets as we sailed out past the Isles of Capri and Ischia and wow was this a spectacle. Taking in the show in the Playhouse Theatre was our next mission. There have been very few Broadway style shows on this cruise, much to Nettie's disappointment, but she's really looking forward to this one and we grabbed the seat nice and early to ensure we get a space. Sadly, we weren't allowed to film any of it. Hmm. So here's our reviews of Electric Avenue. So we've just come out of the Playhouse Theatre to see the headline that's been screened through Electric Avenue and we were pretty explicit that we couldn't record any footage of the show whatsoever. They were pretty mm. strict about that. So we'll have to do one of our reviews. So, Nessie, uh, what was the show all about? Uh, it was about 1980 music um, and it was pretty good, actually. I really enjoyed it. It was, um, they were very good singers, good dancing. They were, they kept on slow. And it was just, um, yeah, really good. And it was a lot of my favourite um, songs as well from the 1980s. So as our show aficionado, you would rate this show, would you? Yeah, I would rate it, yeah. Okay, scores out of five? Good. I'd say five out of five. I really enjoyed and it. That's high praise mm. indeed. Okay, yeah. thanks very much. And now for the grumpy one. Okay, right. Okay, so I am known for being the grumpy one when it comes to these sorts of things. And I better sort of stay in character for that. Uh, it really wasn't my kind of thing, very honest. Uh, I'm just it never really, is. I'm just really <laughs> glad the 80s weren't at all like that. Uh, it did trouble me a little bit that this modern generation interpreted the 80s in that way. It definitely wasn't like that. I don't remember it being anything like that at all. But very talented, just not my thing. Don't listen to him. It was good. Afterwards, we chilled in the glass house and drank good wines before turning in. That had been some day, and we sat there reflecting on our wonderful experiences in Italy, plotting ways to come back. Day seven, and we were sailing back to Valletta, and this was a day at sea. So no rush to get up early then, unless you want to see the sunrise that is. We've loved having our balcony cabin, and today we were determined to make the most of it again. So some more sleep and a late breakfast. Far out at sea, the drop in temperature was noticeable and welcoming. Still warm and probably high 20s rather than high 30s though. We took the opportunity to read and catch up with downloaded TV shows. The day flew past and we said thank you to our brilliant cabin steward Peter and then grabbed a bite of lunch. More slobbing in the afternoon with the occasional stroll around the decks to stretch our legs. A deck barbecue was underway and live music and movies were playing. Nettie wanted to hide the last of her three cruise ducks that she brought with her. Hmm, where should we hide them? Then some more reading and time to pack our cases. We had a late afternoon flight home tomorrow and we were scanning all the information provided to try and work out if we could squeeze in a few hours in Valletta in the morning. In the evening we returned to our favourite planet bar for final cocktails and wines. Then we headed to the main dining room for a final evening meal. We'd been allocated late dining by P&O and this had meant that we hadn't used this excellent dining room as much as we'd liked. But the food here and across the ship had been good all cruise, and tonight was no exception. How's it, Nanny? How's it going? Yeah, I've got these tiger prawns, garlic tiger prawns, with ozone, smartly ozone, pasta and some vegetables. But the prawns, the main flavour, is really nice. Yeah, Looks really good. It. Yeah, it's really tasty. Mm. Out of five? Um, four. Cool. Mm. 
Well, Sai, how's the steak? Really good, actually. Um, we had a steak uh, with Bernays sauce in the glass house and that cost us £10.50. This is included in the fare. It's not quite as fancy, there's no onion rings and stuff with it, but it tastes absolutely wonderful. Really good steak, really well cooked. And uh, yeah, Bernays sauce is, is spot on, absolutely good. At five, definitely five for and also tonight was the night that we got to say thank you to all of the excellent catering staff and waiting staff who've done P&O so proud throughout the entire holiday. So there had been only one thing missing from our Italian cruise holiday and we were about to put that right. Silent disco time! And up on the deck in the warm sea air and moonlight we discovered again what a skin full of wine and some cheesy tunes does to people on the cruise ship, even the younger generations too perfect way to end our week aboard Azura. Day 8 was our day to return home, but the timing of our flight home meant that we could still squeeze in a few hours in Valletta in the morning. Opting for this, we got off the ship early, picked up one of the excellent walking maps and walked into the city. We'd walked some of the two suggested walking routes on our previous visits to Valletta and we we're planning to return here later in the year. So we opted to tick off some of the sites we'd missed on our first visit. This included the ever so impressive Triton Fountain, the Piazza de Jean de Valette, the Prime Minister's House and the Independent Square where we saw the flag being raised. We also took in the beautiful Lower Baraka Gardens with its stunning views across the harbour and breakwater. Valletta is a great city to explore. Its medieval streets are filled with interesting locations as well as great bars and restaurants. We found some places we will visit on our return here, including a lovely street food market where we supped some refreshing homemade lemonade before heading out to do some shopping for snacks for the way home. Hang on, Sai, what have you bought there? So what have you gone for, Sai? A gelato a day keeps the doctor away. That's my favourite saying of the holiday. And obviously I've gone for limon or lemon. And it's very yellow, but also very lemony. What a surprise, you've gone for lemon. <laughs> Our time ashore was running out before we had to be back aboard Azura and await our instruction to get aboard the coach that transferred us to the airport. However, our airport experience was somewhat chaotic, as the short time between dropping us off at the airport and also the sheer volume of passengers trying to check in luggage meant that the airport experience was just a little stressful, but we were soon high in the sky and heading back to Blighty. And that was it, Italy done. Really? So we wanted to see if we could do Italy on this cruise. And we have to say, we loved our time in the elegant Italian cities we visited. We saw lots of things we wanted to see, but like most cruises, this holiday only allowed you the briefest of glimpses into your destinations. But we saw enough to know that we couldn't do justice to the history, culture and friendly people we had encountered in just this week. There is so much to explore and experience. We will plan, of course, to come back and do more of this great country. Italy, you're not done yet. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.